I'm Rico. I'm going to give the next talk. Uh, we're doing some lightning talks, um, so it's going to be pretty quick. Um, I'm Toaster11 on Twitter and GitHub, if you care. I, don't know. Anyway, I see people do that. You know, this is my first time. so I'm, um, Some stuff about me. Uh, I'm a Rails developer, uh, so I spend all day at my employer working on our Rails app. Um, I'm trying to get video of these meetups going. That's the tripod in the corner back there. Um, <laughs> I help with the PDX uh, Ember meetup. Um, so if you see me there, say hi. Um, I try to be pretty friendly. Um, let's see. Um, I'm into barbell weight training, so I try to lift heavy things to get strong. It's a new thing. Um, it's awesome. One of my workout buddies is in the back. He's new to, um, to Portland. Um, if you want to work out with me, then hit me up. Um, love, love lifting with people. Um, I'm enthusiastic about ergonomics and Vim. Um, so anyway, that's me. Um, if any of that stuff is interesting to you, come talk to me afterwards. Um, I'm just going to talk today about testing your routes. Um, I'm not talking about testing individual routes, so like you write a test for a route and then you make the route to make it pass. Um, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing like single tests that test like a certain thing across all of your routes in your app. Um, and um, the way I came into this is that our Rails app at work has grown. Um, it started off pretty small and has expanded as you know applications do. And um, recently, I did some spring cleaning on the routes file. And um, there was a lot of funky stuff. Um, and one trend that I noticed was that I had accumulated a lot of routes um, that now pointed nowhere. Like they, you know, I was new to Rails when I started on this app. And so I made all these routes. And eventually, I changed the controllers, changed what I was doing with the app, never went into the routes file and changed them. So I, um, I cleaned it all up. I got all OCD on it. Um, and uh, I call these now orphaned routes, you know, like they're just kind of out there doing nothing. Um, and uh, so I cleaned them up, and um, it took a long time because I was like going into each one and you know seeing if we needed any more. And I was like, you know, this feels wrong. I'm doing something by hand that I could just have the computer do for me. And then I, I took it a step further, and I was like, well, this is something that should just be in a test, right? So every time I run my test suite, because that's like the test suite is my thing for making sure that my software works. So if I want to make sure that a part of my software works, it should be in a test somewhere, right? So I was like, well, what I want is the test that basically just goes through all my routes, and it's like, is this one an orphaned route? Does it point to a controller in an action, or doesn't it? And if it doesn't, fail the test. Um, and, uh, and that's a good way to make sure that it gets run all the time, catches errors as soon as they happen, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so um, I'll show you what I came up with. Uh, I'm going to show you live code. So um, I created a really uh, de a simple demo app. Um, this would be like what you get if you uh, do a thing scaffolding with one property called name, and it's a string. Um, you would end up with routes that look like this, where you just declare resources on uh, things. And then we have a things controller. Should look pretty standard if you're a Rails developer. This is literally the scaffolding. And I just took out all the comments and everything related to JSON to make it prettier for you all. Um, and so um, when you declare resources, uh, it gives you, um, uh, d it defines some routes in your application that would look like this. Um, this should all look fairly familiar to you. Um, so I wanted a test where, um, this is me running the test suite. There's one test, it passed. So uh, sure. How's can I, you want a little bit bigger? OK, I'm not sure. How's that? Good. OK, so, um, sorry, wrong. So if I run my test suite, I have one test, it passes. And what I want it to do is if I um, have an orphaned route, uh, I want the test to fail, right? So uh, to get an orphaned route, I could say um, comment out the edit action. And let's see what happens if we run rake test. So it fails, right? The following route leads to nowhere. Get thing slash one slash edit, right? Doesn't go anywhere. That's what we want. So, and then if we um, want, we should uh, make it pass by removing the edit route, right? Uh, so let's run our tests again. Bam, it passes, okay? Fine, uh, it's pretty simple. It does what we want, um, but how do we do that? Um, I'm assuming most of you know how to get a list of your routes from uh, using rake. You just do rake routes. Um, 
But that's not really going to work for us in a test. Um, obviously, that's you know just for human consumption. Um, so here's a test. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a list of all the routes. Um, and that's what's happening on this line here. Um, sorry, let me just move my cursor. We're, um, I won't get into the details of what's going on, but basically this is how you get a list of your routes. Um, this is not very useful when you start out. Um, I'll show you. So this is just a Rails console on the um, right-hand side of the screen. Um, and uh, so I just grabbed one of the routes, but let me show you what it actually is. Uh, it is an action dispatch journey route. Um, I don't know about you. I don't really know what to do with that. Um, so I need something different that I can actually manipulate. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, uh, we are uh, going to do, sorry. Uh, whoops. There we go. Um, we're going to call uh, dot the path method, then the spec method, and then turn it into a string. Okay, um, And then what we get as a result is um, the second to the last line in the Rails console. You get this string, which is slash things, slash uh, colon ID slash edit, and then it has this format thing, right? Um, that's more useful, um, but you couldn't take that and put it into a browser. Um, it doesn't actually do anything, right? So we need to get that into the format of something that works in a browser. So the next step, um, which is this line right here. Um, so. Um, what we're doing here is we're just taking this and we're substituting um, the bit about the format, and we're just going to um, use this gsub method, which uh, performs like a substitution on a string. We're going to match the regular expression for the format, and then we're going to replace it with an empty string, right? We're basically just going to get the format thing out of there. And the result is we end up with slash things, slash colon ID, slash edit. So we're one step closer. Um, but what we need to do is, uh, sorry. Um, we need to turn that colon ID into like an actual param, right? Because if you put colon ID in a, in a browser as a URL, it's not going to work. Um, so, oh, damn it, sorry. Um, so we do the next, uh, sorry. There we go. Um, which is, um, we're doing gsub again. So we want to go in and basically take the URL param, which is the colon whatever, um, and we want to, um, this is a horrible hack, but I'm just going to do put in the number one as the param. So um, in Rails, when you set up routes, um, usually, uh, like if you want to go see the, hey, let's do. Um, right, so when you want to go see uh, the thing with ID one, you're going to go to uh, do a get request to slash things, slash the number one. Um, so as a hack, anytime we see uh, this, colon ID as a URL param. We're just going to substitute in the number one. Um, and, uh, um, and so the result is, uh, in the Rails console, we get a nice URL. That's like something we can work with, right? That's a path that we can put in a browser, and it works. Um, so the next thing is we need to get uh, the verb, which is this line here. And I'll show you. Uh, Doing that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So we do this. Um, the route has the verb available to us, but what it is is um, it's a regular expression. Um, and that's not really useful to us. We need uh, to plug this into a test, we basically need a symbol. Um, with uh, the lowercase version of the uh, the verb, uh, so um, so we're uh, so on this line, line zero over here. We're basically creating an array with an upper with uppercase strings of all the different um, verb actions that you can do, and then um, we're using the grep method, which um, what you do is you give it a regular expression, and it goes through the array, and it finds everything that matches. Um, 
So the verb that we get from Rails is a regular expression. So we're basically using that to search through this array of the methods and uh, return something that we can use. And then we're basically just taking the first match in case there's multiples. We just want the first one. Um, and the next step is we're just going to take that. We're going to downcase it and turn it into a symbol. Um, so that will leave us with something uh, like this. Um, and that finally is something we can use. Um, now again, we're doing this for all of our routes, right? So um, that's what we're doing for each route. And then to package it up, the thing that we're um, th that we're going to return with this method. Uh, sorry. Um, defined routes is basically an array with um, each element being a hash that has two keys. One is path and the other one is verb because um, that's what you need, right? And so we do that down on this line where we uh, just return that. And then um, this is like a little thing that comes from experience of ha actually using this in production. Um, you don't want to deal with the assets route in this test because um, it's kind of special or whatever and you want to only test your own <coughs> routes that you have defined. Um, so we're basically just now taking the result of that, iterating over it, and just removing the route that starts with slash assets. Um, and um, so just moving down to here. Um, uh, basically, we just create a container for the orphan routes. Then we're going to iterate over all the routes. Um, we need to catch errors um, because Rails is going to throw up some errors. Um, so we start. Um, so we start a begin block, and then um, we reset the session, um, and then we send a request. And here we're basically using, um, we're saying, uh, do this request using this verb to this path. Um, and uh, the first error that we want to catch is um, action controller routing error. And um, that error basically comes up uh, whenever you have a route defined for a controller that doesn't exist. So if you have like uh, resources things, but you don't have a things controller, this is the error that's going to pop up. And that's exactly one of the things we want to catch, right? That's an orphaned route. Um, it points to a controller action pair that does not exist. Um, so basically, if um, when we encounter this error, we want to uh, drop this, uh, this route into the orphan routes array. Um, we're doing the same thing for the uh, abstract controller action not found. And so that comes up when you have the controller defined, but you don't have the action defined. Um, so if you have a route that points to the edit action on the uh, things controller, but you don't have that defined on the things controller, this is the error you're going to get. So again, that is another orphaned route. And then there are two other errors that you need to catch. Um, there's record not found. And this goes back to the horrible hack of always putting the number 1 for the URL param, um, because you might not have a record with ID 1. And if you don't, this is the error you're going to get. But that's not an orphaned route, because that request went to the router, router found the controller, found the proper action, sent it to that action, um, and then that controller tried to execute, tried to find the record with that ID, couldn't find it, um, but that means that it's not an orphan route, right? Because it got to where it was supposed to go. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. And the last one is uh, new for Rails. It's action, uh, new for Rails 4. It's action controller parameter missing. And then um, what this is basically strong params. Um, so on your update and create actions, you usually are going to submit uh, a bunch of you, uh, bunch of parameters um, for the record that you're creating or updating. Um, we're not doing that in this test. Um, but if you run into this error, it means that the router found the proper controller and an action to go with it. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. And um, to close it up, basically, you just assert that orphan routes are empty. And if they're not, print an error message. Um, so yeah. That's, um, that's the gist of it. Like, this is pretty simple, and orphan routes are not necessarily a security issue. I think they're kind of sloppy, and they go against my OCD nature. Um, but I'm also using the same thing that does not demo as easily because it's more complicated, but um, for like uh, my admin namespace, where I need to make sure that it's a logged-in admin user. Um, something I frequently do is I'll create an admin controller that does not inherit from my admin application controller. So it doesn't actually do checking to make sure that it's an admin user. I'll like inherit it from the normal con like application controller. Um, so if you have an automated test like this, um, it will just catch stuff like that. Um, in fact, I've caught myself like five or six times doing that. Um, especially if you use scaffolding, um, it'll create a controller for you. 
uh, that inherits from your application controller than if you copy that and put it in your admin uh, folder. Um, yeah, it's really easy to make mistakes like that. So um, anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and one last thing I would say is uh, there is, uh, I made a GitHub repo if you wanted to go get to this test. Um, it's just GitHub toaster loving orphan underscore routes. So anyway, thank you all again.